Welcome to the brave new world of immuno-oncology. It's moving fast and promising new therapeutic approaches for a whole range of cancers. At the heart of it all are tumour cells and immune cells, so we need to know what these cells are doing and how they're interacting. Tumour cells proliferate at a rate of knots, but do you really know what these cells are up to in real time? Is their growth regular? Is it affected by different environmental factors? Is that even important? And when do you make the crucial endpoint measurements to give you that information? Well, in an ideal world, you wouldn't need to. You'd simply measure the cell activity as it happens in real time without disturbing your cells. This would give you a true reflection of the growth curve, helping you to characterize your cellular models and plan downstream assays. For example, to study how tumor cells move or how their speed might change over time. Of course, you can do that now if you've got the steady hand required to perform endpoint scratch tests or the endless patience for labelling and counting your cells in Boyden chamber assays. But surely there should be a better way. And what about immune cells, such as neutrophils, macrophages, T cells, dendritic cells, and natural killers? They're a different beast altogether. A rare and expensive one as far as the lab is concerned. This constantly circulating surveillance team is on the lookout for anything non-self, bacteria, viruses, and, of course, tumour cells. When they encounter something, all hell breaks loose. Measuring how they proliferate and cluster in response to these invaders is important. Whatever immunotherapeutic approach you're investigating, this is what it's all about. The immune system fighting and destroying tumour cells. But how do they migrate towards chemical stimuli? And how do they escape the circulatory system to attack? Equally important, how do you even know when it's going to happen? Immune cells can take hours, if not days, to activate. And you can't just hang around, hoping to choose the right endpoint for your assay. Back in that ideal world, we could use real-time analysis to measure chemotactic migration and invasion as it happens, getting more data more quickly and easily from fewer of those rare and expensive cells and without having to worry about introducing annoying artefacts. No washing, no lifting, no fixing. And that's important. Need to know which immune cell populations are the most effective killers, or how quickly it happens? That's no problem with real-time analysis. Direct measurements mean that you can get to grips with the underlying cell populations. You can learn whether your immune cells are inducing tumour cell death, or simply stopping them from proliferating in the first place. You can also find out if your immune cells are dealing with a big population of tumour cells where only a small number are dying, or a much smaller population where the proportion of dying cells is quite high. You can even keep monitoring these cellular interactions as long as you want to. The sky's the limit, and that's important too. And what happens once the tumour cells have been killed? We know that the immune system sends along squads of macrophages to clear up the evidence, but again, it's important to be sure exactly what is happening and when. Whatever the cell type, the story is the same. Automated real-time imaging and analysis helps you to get under the skin of your cells, giving you a true sense of what's going on, without exhausting your precious cells and without introducing artefacts. All in a controlled incubator environment and from the comfort of your armchair. And that is our ideal world.